我们下一场议程要开始喽，就是看要不要把前面的舞台还给讲者。我们下一场议程要开始了。The next session will、uh, start is the non-code contribution to open source session. 嗯、um, ，Hi everyone. So our next、um, speaker is be is gonna be Nevin Du, and he is a maintainer of an organization called Apache APCs, and he also contributed to a lot of open source projects. And today he's going to introduce about、um, different ways you can contribute to open sources in means that do not necessarily involve code. So let's welcome Nevin Du. Okay, I'll use this. Yeah. So, uh, thanks everyone for joining. Good morning. And uh, before we start,、uh, let's can I do a show of hands? How many of you are open source contributors? Any open source contributors here? No one. Okay, you are. How many of you want to contribute to open source? Okay, yeah, almost everyone. Yeah, that's awesome. So. 92 percent of employers say that they find it difficult to find open source talent, so people who have open source skills. And 52 percent of developers haven't contributed to open source, but they want to contribute to open source. But 33 percent of them don't know where to start. And 31 percent think they aren't skilled enough. So. A little bit about me. So I work on Apache API 6, and、uh, I, I used to work on some CNCF projects, Cloud Native Computing Foundation projects. If you were here at the KCD track yesterday, I, I gave a talk about some of my work, and I try to help open source contributors, new open source contributors, contribute to open source through programs like Google Summer of Code and the Linux Foundation Mentorship Program. And you can find me online at、uh, navindu.me or on my Twitter account. Yeah.、Uh, a little bit about my project Apache API 6. So API 6 is a cloud-native API gateway, and we are hosted by the Apache Software Foundation.、Uh, it does stuff like load balancing, canary release, circuit breaking, breaking authentication, and all sort of stuff. So if you are interested in that project. Uh, feel free to check it out. You can also contribute to the project. It's an Apache Software Foundation project, so you can definitely contribute to that as well after this session. And everything mentioned in this talk is available online, so you can read through it later if you want at navendu.me/noncodecontributions. First of all,、uh, why? Why should you contribute to open source? Let's get that clear, and let's make sure that we have a common understanding of why you might want to contribute to open source. Yeah. First, the first thing is quite obvious. You can build your skills. So, if you are a student or if you are a new developer, contributing to open source can help you improve your skills. And if you are a student, you can apply what you have learned in your textbooks to actual code, to actual stuff that people are building. You can also build your resume. So, if you are a developer and you have an experience in contributing to open source, it will definitely help you get your next job. And you also improve your network. So you can see how many people are here at this conference just because of open source. So you get to meet a lot of people. You get to meet people across countries, across continents, and you get to build your network. So next time you need some help, you can rely on this network. And you can also contribute to software that you use. So most of you will be users of a, some open source project, even if you are not a developer as well. So even if you are not a developer, you might be using some open source software. So you can definitely contribute back to that project、uh, through open source contributions. 
Open source also helps you find mentors, so people who can help you in your careers, who can help you learn new stuff. And finally, you are a part of a community. So open source brings people together and it, it builds a community and you'll be part of that community. Next, why non-code contributions? So contributing to open source often, people often think that contributing to open source just involves code, right? You contribute code, you have to be a very good engineer, you have to write awesome code and then only then you can contribute to open source stuff. So today I'm here to talk to you about non-code contributions. So contributions that does not involve code, but it is also impactful. So why, wh why do we care about non-code contributions and why is it important? So first of all, I think non-code contributions are more, Im more impactful or more valuable than contributing code itself. So a project might have a lot of code contributors, but without non-code contributions, it is difficult to sustain the project. And yeah, most projects has, have a lot of code contributors and very few non-code contributors, but non-code contributions are quite essential to sustaining the project. So there will be less non-code contributors and you should, you should be able to bridge that gap. And it has a huge impact on the project's success. And, and some other reasons might be that you are not a coder. So people who are also not programmers, they can contribute to open source. So even if you are not a coder, you might consider non-code contributions. And uh, you are skilled you, and you like contributing in other ways maybe. So even if you know programming, you might be interested in contributing to projects in some other way, which we will look into later. So you can uh, make non-code contributions if you are interested in that particular area. And finally, it's a stepping stone to contributing code. So as we will see later in this section, uh, making non-code contributions can often lead to uh, code contributions in the future. All right, so now let's look at what some of these non-code contributions are and how you can make them. First of all, we'll talk with, we'll start with writing. So writing involves a lot of stuff. So especially in open source software projects, writing involves technical writing. So if you are a good enough developer and if you like writing, if you are skilled at technical writing, you can definitely contribute to open source projects as a technical writer and by creating technical, uh, written technical content for the project. So that involves writing documentation, open source projects or like any projects for that matter need a documentation. So people will not be able to use the open source project without good documentation. And as a technical writer, as someone who is interested in writing, you can contribute to the documentation. And the second one is the blog post. So even if you don't work in the documentation side, you can write your own blog post and publish it on your blog or like on the project's blog or on other, uh, other platforms. And writing blog posts helps the project gain more users. So you can share how you are using the project, you can sh share about a new feature or what you are working on in that project and as a writer and publish blog posts. And of course, translating documentation. So I work on Apache API 6 and it is built by Chinese developers and we have documentation both in Mandarin and in English. So it's a, it's a process to like translate documentation between multiple languages, especially in, in, in areas like Taiwan, right? Because you are multilingual, you use multi, mul multiple languages and, but people, let's say people in the US might not understand Mandarin and they want English documentation. So if you are skilled in both languages, you might consider working as a translator. You can help translate documentation, blog posts, or anything from one language to another. And of course, social media. So projects need social media to gain more users, get more popularity. You can create uh, content for social media as a writer as well. Okay, let's talk about designing next. So designing 
uh, contributing to open source as a designer is uh, useful if you are very creative and you, you like designing. So you can create art for art for your blog post, uh, social media stuff, and even you can design swags maybe. So if you if you are skilled in that area, open source projects you definitely require people who are skilled in that area. So you can make such contributions. And the second part is uh, creating a style guide. So. Uh, Open source project may not have style guides, may not have consistency in their visual designs. So as a contributor, you can create a style guide to ensure this consistency. So other, other contributors can follow your style guide and uh, work on the project in a consistent way. And this is a quite uh, non-obvious way to contribute to open source. So like I mentioned before, like most of us are open source users. But how many of us are open source testers? In fact, every one of us is an open source tester. So contributing to open source as a tester is very uh, a very easy thing to do if you are using open source. So if you are a user of the project, you can report bugs. Go to GitHub, uh, go, to the, go to the project, go to the issues tab and open an issue if you, if you find one. So reporting bugs can help the developers of the project uh, find issues that they might have missed and it will definitely help improve the project. So if you are thinking about st contributing to open source, if you, are, if you haven't contributed to open source yet, then this is a good first step. Just go to GitHub, the project and just open, start opening issues. And you can be an advocate of the project. So if you are using open source stuff, let's say if you are using an open source operating system, you might want to talk to other people about using the operating system. You can promote the operating system uh, or you can promote the open source project you are using. It will help the project gain more users and uh, you can be an advocate for the project. Help improve user experience. So uh, open source maintainers often are often too close to the project to see issues in the user experience. Sometimes we uh, sometimes like we get too used to a bad user experience and as users, as new users of an open source project, you can easily find issues in the user experience and you can report these issues to, to the team and they will, they can improve the project. So it's, it's a quite valuable contribution. And finally, m uh, a lot of open source project projects have alpha and beta testing. So alpha testing means an internal testing and beta testing is like uh, similar testing but out, uh, out for the public. So you can sign up for alpha and beta testing and just uh, test the new version of the project before they are actually released. This will help out, uh, help developers identify bugs before they are, uh, before the software is published. And mentoring. So. So if you are an experienced person, if you have experience in, let's say, a programming language, maybe you are experienced in Go, you can share that experience with other mentees in the open source projects. So you can mentor newcomers. There might be students who are interested in contributing, but they might know how to start, or they might know a programming language well enough to make contributions. So as a mentor, you can help these students, you can help these newcomers uh, get new skill sets, you can help them uh, you can help them get their skills and you can share your skills with them and that will help them make better contributions. And you can also review code. So most open source projects have have their pull requests open. So you can you can see what, what all pull requests are made to the project and if you are if you are an expert in a programming language or, or a technology, you can help the help help the project by reviewing code. It's it's quite easy. You just have to uh, look at the code. You maybe test it and uh, see if it works. And any review to the project is quite helpful. And the key part of open source is paying it forward. So if you are contributing to open source, if someone helped you contribute to open source, you have to do that for for the next level of people. So you pay it forward and that's the, that's the key part of open source. 
And of course, uh, open source is about community. And as we mentioned, uh, a big part of open source is the community that builds around the open source project. And this community needs some managing to function properly. So a way to contribute to open source without contributing code is by being a community manager. And a community manager uh, does a lot of stuff. You do a lot of stuff. You wear different hats. Like, uh, so this is for people who are interested in doing multiple things, who are skilled in doing multiple things. So you can organize the project. So that means uh, you can be in charge of uh, maintaining the projects, uh, maybe triaging issues, adding labels, following up on issues, following up on pull requests, all sort of stuff. You can also be the release manager. So that's uh, something that you can do in an open source project. So managing open source projects takes a lot of time and effort. A lot of people will be contributing to the project. So bringing them all together in one place and working on one release is a difficult task. You need someone dedicated to work on that. And being a release manager is just that. You can uh, talk to different people, make sure that uh, all, the, all the pull requests, all the, uh, all the code for the next release is ready, and then uh, release the project. And you can also organize events and meetups. So uh, we have the Apache API 6 project, and we organize meetups around uh, the project to get uh, users, contributors, and maintainers of the project together in one room and just talk about API 6. So we need people who can help us do that as well. You can help uh, open source projects by organizing new events like this one. So you can organize meetups. Uh, you, maybe it, it could even be virtual. So just. Uh, a, a Zoom meeting where you bring all, all, the, all the stakeholders or all the, all the participants in the project together to discuss about something. So pe we need people to help us uh, do that as well. And finally, I want to mention that this list is not exhaustive. So these are not the only things uh, you can do to make non-code contributions. There are definitely more ways you can make non-code contributions. And most of the time, all the non-code contributions you make are very impactful to the project. So the key takeaway here is that you don't need to be a great coder. You, know, you don't need to be a programming language expert to be open source contributors. You can still make non-code contributions, and that would be as impactful as code contributions. And if you are looking to contribute to a project after this talk, so most of you here mentioned that you are interested in contributing to open source, but you haven't been able to. So API 6 has a good contribu contributor guide. So you can definitely check this out. And it will walk you through how you can make uh, contributions to open source. Uh, so we also have areas where you can make non-code contributions as well and code contributions. So if you are interested in contributing to the project, feel free to check out this link. And finally, if you have any questions uh, about my talk or about my work in open source or anything related to open source or open source projects, feel free to ask now. Or, or else you can find me online at uh, my Twitter, or you can send me an email. And everything I mentioned in this talk is available at uh, navendra.me slash non-code contribution, so you can check that out as, as well. So thank you, and I open the floor for questions. Hello, my name is Tumi. I'm a con um, uh, your so-called non-code contributor in PyCon Taiwan, and my specialty is marketing. And uh, I'm wondering if uh, international open source projects are uh, considering uh, marketing uh, as important, and how do they uh, marketing their projects? Thanks. Yeah, uh, so the question revolves around marketing in open source project and if it is a good way to contribute to open source. 
So I think marketing is quite important as well. So a lot of the stuff mentioned here, maybe writing, writing blog posts for open source project is a way to market the open source projects, creating, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Cre creating social media posts for the project maybe, uh, that's also a way to market the project, creating posters uh, of the open source project, uh, as we mentioned in the designing session, is also a good way to market the project. And going around uh, in conferences and talking about the project, uh, that's also a good way to market the, pro market the project. So definitely marketing is quite important. And uh, so I, I work for a company called API 7.ai that is building stuff on top of open source projects. And we have a dedicated team to market Apache API 6. So if you are interested in marketing, then uh, and if you are interested in open source, there are definitely job opportunities for you. So contributing to open source in non-code ways can also help you get your job. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's quite happening. And uh, I think in places like Taiwan and like around China, like there are a lot of open source projects coming up. And there are a lot of uh, jobs around this as well that uh, relates to marketing and stuff. So yeah, definitely a good way to contribute. Uh, any other questions, you can raise your hands. Okay. Uh, how I am uh, a user of Linux, and uh, I w and wonder it's a question or not, but I am uh, using the rolling uh, release, but uh, it works fine on in my environment. So it's, should I uh, say on the uh, social media that it's fine in my environments or I would uh, uh, test to other, in, it's for example in virtual bus or uh, how do I to contribute in this situation? <laughs> so as I understand like, uh, you are testing out an open source project that works on your environment, but you are not sure if it is works on other environments. Okay, so yeah, definitely like you can, you can mention that it is working on your environment and like uh, that, that itself will be a good contribution because uh, other people might be using different environments, but they don't, might not have your environment. So mentioning that uh, it, it works as intended in your environment, it's, it's good. So you should definitely share that. Anything about, anything positive about open source projects is definitely good, yeah.